Anatomy and Physiology Facebook Live all about the top four ways you can remember your anatomy and physiology ready for your exam day. So often what people find, and obviously if you guys are on, say hi, let me know you're listening. So pop a little comment below, give us a little thumbs up. Let me know what's going on in your world today. What are you up to right now? How are you kicking off your Friday? Let me know. It's good to hear from you. So whilst you are popping in a couple of comments, if you're watching the recording, you can also comment. That would be grand. Please do. So top four ways to remember your anatomy and physiology. Ready for your exam day. So there are loads of different ways that you can work on your memory skills ready for your exam but most of the times when people say i just can't remember anything or it's not sticking in my head it's not always down to the fact that they have a rubbish memory in them their eyes or the fact that um they that it's a complex subject or that they are stupid or all these different words that people use for themselves it's generally not the case the case is that how they're learning it is not serving them. They're trying to learn it in a, a way that is like repeating something over and over and over again, rather than using um, p- specific strategies and skills to learn it. If you learn it in a certain way, you'll basically be putting it in the right file in your brain. So it means that when that exam question comes up, you know which file to access. And that's what we're after. And then once you can access that file, you can then answer that question confidently. That's the main thing in terms of memorising ready for your exam. It's all about filing stuff properly. So how are we going to do this today? I've basically got four top different solutions that you can use. These are the type of things that we use when we're breaking information down on all of our revision stuff as why people find it easy to use. But um, you can then use this and apply that same strategy to anything else that you come across. So if you have any of these that you use on a regular basis, then what I'd love you to do is pop in a little comment, let me know what of these you use and where you use them. Give us a couple of examples because that would be awesome. I'd like to hear that. So um, give us a couple of thumbs up as we head through. If any of these resonate, that would be grand. So first one, we're going to do it in reverse order. Number four, the number four of the four top ways to remember anatomy and physiology is going to be the visual memory. So number four of the top four is visual memory. If you can use your visual memory as much as possible, and regardless of whether you're a visual learner or not, it's been been shown in research that people respond really well to visual uh, cues and to using their visual memory. The reason why the place we use this the most on our stuff is generally with learning the muscles because people struggle with learning muscles because they're trying to do it from a grid base. And then when they come and look at a... Uh, an image or they then have to relate that to the body it's confusing but visual can really really help whether you're chunking it down and literally staring at that image until it kind of embeds into your retina then that's one way of doing it but then once you do that you should be able to close your eyes and still be able to see the shape of that muscle still see the words on it with the origin and insertion and what the key to visual memory is repetition so you need to be looking at that image once and then seeing if it sticks in the brain and then looking at it again and then again and you almost want to intensify that over about a 10 to 15 minute period of just working with the same type of image that is much more effective than going between all the different muscles and trying to spend like a minute on each and then spreading out and sort of getting really confused so if you spend like 10 15 minutes just trying to learn the intricacies of one particular muscle for example and really commit it to your visual memory, it will help massively. So that's number four. That's number four of our top four ways. Number three is rhymes. Now, um, I'm not really a natural poet, I'll be honest with you, but it's quite simple. Once you start learning about what something is doing, um, say about the joints, for example, then you can start to work out and find little creative ways of putting together some rhymes. And any of those rhymes that already exist that you can then be taking and using. So we've got a few out there at the moment for specific for joints. So, for example, for a way of remembering ball and socket joint, you can have a ball is free to twist and tip. All planes of movement for shoulder and hip. 
so that you have like little rhymes that just allow you to be able to remember how they kind of work, how they fit together. So when you get to the exam, you go, oh, which one was it? And you can then relate it back to the rhyme and just replay the rhyme in your mind. That's number three. So number two is, mm, we're getting into my favorites now. So this one is acronyms. So acronyms are fantastic for remembering things. So those that have um, seen some of our videos before, or those of you that are on our revision mastery have definitely come across the one that we use for the nutrition side, which is the digestive system. So this is MOS, D, MOS is a DJ in LA. So if you write down the letters M-O-S-S-D-J-I-L-A. So think Kate Moss, imagine her DJing in LA and as in Los Angeles, then you'll be able to get a little bit of a visual image, then write down the acronym M-O-S-S-D-J-A-I-L-A, and then they all stand for parts of the digestive system, so it helps you then break it down as you move forward. Um, acronyms are fantastic, so if you can use these wherever possible, you might have to like shift some things around. So, for example, um, we set up an acronym for which one will be good? Motor skills. So the motor skills, in order to learn all of those, we use the acronym SPACER, and that then stands for space, uh, no it doesn't, speed, power, agility, and then coordination, and then E, kind of going, ah, oh, which one would be a motor skill for E? We've got equilibrium, which is balance. So sometimes you have to find a different word that fits, that will help you remember what it is, and then the final one is reaction times. So Using acronyms is a fantastic one. That's number two. Now, the top way of remembering anything is going to be stories and analogies. If you can use a story to help you remember something, your brain will commit that into a file a much easier than all those other ways even combined. So, for example, if you have um, a story about how the heart pumps through the body or the you know the circulation pumps through the body or you have a a story in relation to a um sliding filament b being the same as um uh sort of like rowing boats or tug of war then you'll have an analogy that you can relate it to um i worked with somebody who was an engineer by trade retraining to be a personal trainer and he done this fantastically because he could relate parts of the body and parts of how it's working, so like the heart, to an engine, for example. And if you can relate it to something that you already know, then it will latch hold of those files so much quicker. So that's really the beauty of using stories and analogies, is that you need to find something in your knowledge that you can relate it to, because it will latch hold of something in your brain and be able to root that down every single time. So then you can rephrase that and re-grab it like whenever you need to. So uh, stories and analogies is definitely number one, the top, definitely. So let's run back through those. The four top ways of remembering your anatomy and physiology. Number four was visual memory, using your visual memory to really kind of take your time and go through things um, and really take your time to absorb that image, get that burnt in on your retina and then using that so that you should be able to almost see in order to recall the information. Number one, uh, sorry, number one, number three was rhymes. And that's about finding sort of a, a rhyme and a rhythm or a little poem that will help you remember certain sequences or certain attributes and features of a specific uh, uh, anatomy, for example. Then you've got acronyms. Acronyms are fantastic, easy to remember, make things really simple. They're great for a brain dump at the beginning as well. A beginning of your exam. Then you've got the final one, number one, stories and analogies. If you can relate it to something you already know, then you are 50% there already, I promise. So let me know which you use. What of those do you use? Do you have any funky little ones that you use that help you? I'm also a big fan of alliteration, um, and that goes in there in relation to acronyms and things like that. But alliteration is a really, really good one. Um, so we use it quite a lot with things like concentric movement and, and how the C on concentric relates to the load going up to the clouds, but it's also the muscle is collapsing, it's getting shorter. So you can then use alliteration, which is the first letter of every word, all saying the same thing, basically. Um, 
I would love to know what you use. What do you use? How do you remember stuff? Pop it down in the comments. Let me see what you're up to. And yeah, I look forward to hearing all your different comments.